Hey guys, Yulia here. So I'm still planting my bulbs today because my second shipment of bulbs was really late. They just arrived yesterday, uh, but that's okay. It's not the first time I'm planting bulbs in December. In fact, I plant my bulbs all the way until our ground freezes sometimes um, in January. So I have planted some bulbs so far and that's what I wanted to show you. And also I'm going to plant the rest of my bulbs with you today. All right, the first group of tulips I planted right here with these pansies. Um, now, I did get some questions about the pansies. Why am I planting them in the fall? How come they're still blooming? Um, so these pansies are actually called winter survivor right here, and they will bloom all winter long. Um, if we have snow cover, obviously they will be covered, but then when the snow melts, they will bloom again. And I planted uh, about a hundred short white tulips, which I think will be beautiful with this color right here. The soil here is really good. And whenever I plant anything in the spot, I just use a trowel or a hand. That's how good the soil is here. So I think it will be really beautiful. This is the entrance to the house that we use the most. And I really wanted to have here, something here for the spring. And here is the second spot right here. I don't know if you recognize this place. Sorry about the sun, you guys. But I did a spring tour here of all the shrubs that were blooming. Um, the doggy's been really good. Um, anyway, I had dahlias here for the summer. I dug them up and this was a completely empty bed and I thought it is just perfect for some tulip display. The soil here is pretty good. It's not as good as where I just showed you, so I had to use a pro plugger and I planted about a 400 bulbs. They're all in um, like a pink, purple, uh, really dark purple family. And I planted some fritillarias, which I'm uh, super excited for. And the next two spots I will be planting is right there and right there and ignore my finger. I heard it the other day, so I have a band-aid on it. Um, anyway, I think it will be just beautiful. These tulips right here, those tulips, and in the flower garden, I'm going to plant about 500 tulips. And I am cleaning up more of the garden as I go. I actually removed some of the invasive spiraea right there last night, um, so I'll have more space. So I'm going to start planting right over there next. So I planted a beautiful mix of tulips in this exact spot last year. Uh, it was called Night in Paris. It was so stunning this spring. Um, the mix was white, pink, and dark tulips. And I was especially impressed with the really large white flowers in that mix. But what happened is that they just disappeared. Um, the tulip bulbs themselves, I can't find in the spot anymore. I know I have voles in my garden, but I know they're not in this spot. And I also did not dig up the bulbs. I have no idea what happened to them. They just disintegrated. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to plant exactly the same mix. Um, I have about 70 bulbs right here. And this spot right here has an okay soil. And because the soil in my garden is all different, uh, because I've been working on some beds more years than others, um, like for example, where I showed you the pansies, I can literally dig that soil with my bare hands. Um, in some spots in my garden, I need a pickaxe. Um, in some spots, like this one, it's somewhere in between. So I use a number of tools to plant my bulbs. Uh, I usually start with the pro plugger because I can do it standing up. And um, then sometimes I use a trowel, sometimes I use a, a shovel to dig a trench. Sometimes I use a tool like this, the bulb planter. Um, sometimes I use all of them because I like to alternate um, during the process because when you use the same tool over and over again, it's really hard on um, that part of your body that you're using at the time. Like for example, if you're standing up for a long time, your back can start feeling a little achy, or if you're 
pressing on the trowel constantly. This part of your hand starts to hurt. So I try to just mix it up and it makes planting so, so much easier. So I'm just going to uh, go ahead and lay out the bulbs and start planting. This is the next area right here. This is the flower garden where I had uh, dahlias in the summer and some cardoons. Look at how beautiful this plant is. Um, so I'm actually moving them out of here because I'm trying to save them in the winter. Uh, they are hardy to zone seven. I am zone six, but I'm going to try to save them because they are gorgeous. Anyway, what I wanted to show you as well is this pot right here uh, where I had tulips in the spring and then some annuals in the summer. But what I do with my pots is I fill them halfway with weeds when I fill them up in the spring. So I um, fill them halfway in the, uh, with weeds and then some soil on top. And what happens is that it actually becomes a, like a composting pile. It's called composting in place. Look at that soil. Have you <laughs> seen soil like more beautiful than this? It is like incredible. So I do that with all of my pots and in the fall when I dump the soil out because I wanted to see what happened. This happens. It's like the most beautiful thing ever. Anyway, the reason I dumped the soil out of this pot is because I want to move it. So I have uh, this mixture of tulips, it's about 500, going in this flower garden. This uh, flower garden is 12 by 12. And I just want this square of beauty. And I don't want that pot to distract from it because it is pretty simple corner right here with the Leland cypresses, some um, hamamelis. I have a star magnolia right there. And I want this sharp square of just tulips. So I'm going to move the pot, plant the tulips and um, mulch with hardwood mulch on top of the tulips and on top of this drip irrigation that I installed this summer. So let me get started. All right, you guys, this is obviously the next day. I was planting until it got dark last night. And when it got dark, I actually brought out two flashlights and I kept planting. I made 300 holes with this pro plugger. And all I have to do is just put the bulbs in there and cover them with soil. It was very efficient. 
I actually didn't need to um, have that much light. It just kept plugging on. And um, yeah, let me just finish this. And then I have another little place that I want to plant up with some crocuses, but I have bowl problem in there. So I just wanted to show you what I'm going to do about that. So here are the holes I made last night and I already started putting the tulips in them. And here are some that I still have to put the tulips in. And all of those are the little plugs and all I have to do is just cover the holes once I put the tulips in. While I'm putting tulips in here, I wanted to talk about that tree over there. I got a lot of questions from one of the videos what it is. So it is uh, hamamelis or witch hazel amethyst. It's an absolutely beautiful native tree and there are three in there and it's so funny that they all have different fall color. Every single year they surprise me with different fall colors. Um, they're very low maintenance trees like uh, part sun location and it will bloom at the end of January. I already see the buds on it. So highly recommend it. It has everything a small to medium sized tree can have. Beautiful fall color, blooms in the winter, beautiful structure, and it's native. By the way, as I'm planting, some of these tulips are diseased. So if you see some that are, don't look that great, just throw them away. There's no, no reason to risk spreading any disease in your soil. So this is the area in my garden where I have voles. I don't know why we are always had them here and nowhere else in the garden. Um, and I want to plant some crocuses in this area. So what I'm trying to do this year is plant them in these cages and see how it works. Full disclosure, this is the first time I'm using these plastic cages. I usually use just uh, regular plastic pots to protect my bulbs from critters, but these definitely will provide better drainage for bulbs. So we sort of will experiment together and see how the bulbs do versus the regular plastic pot. So I have uh, two groupings of crocuses that I want to plant, one right there and one right there. Um, here are my crocuses right here and I want to see how many of them uh, each plastic cage can fit. So let me just get started. Each of these cages seems will fit about 30 focus bulbs. Okay, that's great. And the next part I have done before. This is uh, one of the floral frogs that you use in floral arrangements. But I use them as my protection from squirrels for smaller bulbs. If you have larger bulbs like tulips, you need um, chicken wire which has larger openings and then you just cover your bulbs just like that and soil. squirrels at least my squirrels love focuses don't know why just over oh, here. Okay, we can't even tell. And now we'll see what happens in the spring. All right, you guys, this is it for all the bulbs that were supposed to be planted outside. I am done for this year. I think it's going to be a spectacular spring display. Now the next project is forcing of the bulbs that I probably am going to do inside the house. So this is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. 
and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Not sure. What is that? That's where I usually go. Too many words. Okay, I want to plant. No, no. All right, you guys, this is it. That mail truck's gotta go.